164. The Seventh day Adventist church is modern day Israel. The 144,000 are numbered amongst Israel. The great multitude, they come from every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. The 144,000 could be numbered. The great multitude, the second fruits of the living, no man could number them. They are a complete, distinct, and separate group. But they're going to be saved. One from the church, the first fruits, the 144,000, sealed. And then God pours out the Holy Spirit upon them. Just after the angel of Ezekiel 9 and verse 11 seals the 144,000, then the same angel, according to Ezekiel 10 and verse 2, goes in between the cherubims under the wheels and takes the life coals of fire, representing the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 2 and verse 3, and scatters them over the city, Jerusalem, the church. Why does God pour out the Holy Spirit after Ezekiel 9? Upon those who are left in the city, the church. Who are left? The sealed ones. The 144,000 after the slaughter of Ezekiel 9. Because they will still have their work to do, brethren. And that's why Isaiah 66 and verse 19 says, And I will set a sign among them, a mark among them, a seal among them. Who are these people? And I will send those that escape of them. What do they escape? I'm going to send those that are marked and I'm going, to, I'm going to send those that are sealed among them to the nations afar off that have not heard my fame. You see, after they're sealed, they will still have a work in proclaiming the gospel to those who have not heard his fame, neither have seen his glory. And they shall declare. What does the word declare mean? Proclaim. They're going to proclaim his glory to those who have not heard it. And then Isaiah 66, 20 says, And they, the escaped ones, who escaped the judgment in the house of God. Isaiah 66 and verse 16, For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. The slain of the Lord shall be many? What slain, brethren? Testaments to the Church, volume 1, page 189 and 190, inspiration says, And I saw that the Lord was wetting his sword in heaven to cut them down. Oh, that every lukewarm professor could realize the clean work that God is about to make. Did you hear that, brethren? Oh, that every lukewarm professor, Seventh-day Adventist, could realize the clean work that God is about to make amongst his professed people. Brethren, I saw that the Lord was wetting his sword in heaven to cut them down. What sword? The sword of Ezekiel 9. And that's why inspiration says, study the ninth chapter of Ezekiel. These words will be literally fulfilled. Yet the time is passing and God's people are asleep. They refuse to humble their souls and to be converted. Not a great while longer will the Lord bear with the people who have such great and important truths Revealed to them, but who refuse to bring these truths into their individual experience. Time is short. God is calling. Will you receive his message? Will you be converted before it's too late? Soon and very soon, every case will be decided for eternity. Brethren, God is about to remove the Achans. Why? Because according to volume 3, Testaments to the Church, page 265, inspiration says, One sinner may diffuse darkness that will exclude the light of God from the entire congregation. That's why the church must be purified, brethren. If we don't see sin like God sees it, we better start looking at it. We better start looking again, brethren. And God will not manifest his power in the midst of his people while sins exist among them. And are fostered among those who profess the truth. But dearly beloved, Psalm chapter 1 and verse 5. The ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. And where does judgment begin? 1 Peter 4, 17, in the house of God. The ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Are there sinners in the congregation right now of the righteous? 
Oh yes, brethren. And although we are not to say who the righteous are, who the wicked are, because Jesus said, let the wheat and the tares grow together until the harvest. There are two opposing influences continually being exerted, brethren, in the church of Christ right now. One is exerting an influence for purification and the other one for defilement. But you see, my brethren, we must allow God to do his work. In the book of Matthew, chapter 3 and verse 12, inspiration says, the Bible says, that God is about to manifest that his fan is in his hand and he is about to thoroughly cleanse his floor. What floor? The church floor. The church, brethren. So my brethren, Isaiah 66 and verse 20, and they, the escaped ones, shall bring all your brethren out of all nations, upon horses and upon mules, upon chariots upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem saith the Lord as the children of Israel bring an offering into a clean vessel into the house of the Lord notice brethren it's the children of Israel who are bringing their brethren into a clean vessel into a into the house of the Lord the 144,000 sealed from the 12 tribes of Israel, modern day Israel, spiritual Israel. That which God purposed to do for the world through ancient Israel, the chosen nation, he will finally accomplish through his church on earth today, brethren. Oh, my brethren. And that's why inspiration says, let us strive with all the power that God has given us to be among the 144,000 who stand with the Lamb on Mount Zion. You will notice, brethren, that when the 144,000, as the children of Israel, bring an offering into a clean vessel, if you would have noticed there, where are they bringing them? Isaiah 66, 20. And they shall bring all their brethren out of all nations, upon mules, upon swift beasts, to my holy mountain, Jerusalem. When the 144,000 go out to preach, they're going to bring their brethren to God's holy mountain. What holy mountain? Micah chapter 4 and verse 1. But in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house, the kingdom, the premillennial phase of God's kingdom. Oh yes, my dearly beloved brethren. We need to believe what the Bible says. The question that confronts us, brethren, is this. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Have we got enough faith, brethren, to believe that what the word says, it will do? A great trumpet is about to be blown, brethren, by the hundred and forty and four thousand. And they shall come, which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria, and the outcast in the land of Egypt. And they're going to worship at God's holy mountain. In Jerusalem. At God's holy mountain. In Jerusalem. And that statement, brethren, you can read in Isaiah 27, verses 12 and 13. The trumpet is going to be blown. Mount Zion. The premillennial kingdom, the first dominion, Micah chapter 4 and verse 8, shall come to the daughter of Zion, not mother Zion, not ancient Zion, but the daughter of Zion, modern day Jerusalem, modern day church, the modern day church. The kingdom is going to come, the first dominion that was lost is going to come, brethren, and we want to be a part of this, brethren. So in closing... Right now we're living in the sealing time, brethren. The next event is the war, then the Sunday law, then the great time of trouble. But when the 144,000 proclaim the loud cry, my brethren, and that's why I've always been emphasizing, do we have what it takes? Do we have faith to believe that what the word says it will do? Many people have questioned how are we going to get to Mount Zion? How are we going to get to Jerusalem? Because right now, 
Certainly right now, brethren, it's not a place to lie down safely. You see, brethren, and that's why it's so important to understand prophecy. When the war begins in Jerusalem, Zechariah 14, 2, God begins the work of cleansing the land. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 20 on down, refers to the four carpenters, who as carpenters, they're going to be sent into the land to free the land. Look at the last verse in Zechariah chapter 1. To cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. God's going to drive out the wicked, very similar to what he purposed to do through ancient Israel. He's going to drive out the wicked and the only people that will be left there when the first fruits, 144,000, are taken to the kingdom. The only people that will be left there will be those that follow the Lamb and follow the God whom Moses worshipped. So God's going to drive out the wicked. And brethren, listen, God says my kingdom is going to be established Ezekiel 36, verse 25 on down. God says, I'm going to gather my people from all nations and bring them back to the land that I gave unto their fathers. And I'm going to sprinkle clean water upon them. And I'm going to be sanctified in them. And the nations are going to say, what great nation Is like unto this nation. And that's why in Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 8, the 144,000 are referred to as being men wondered at. Men are going to wonder at them. The fear of the nations will be upon them. Oh, my dearly beloved brethren, I wish I could speak more about this at this time. But, brethren, I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. Brethren, it's time. To study like we've never studied before. Zechariah chapter 8. Again it talks about 10 men. Taking hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. Saying we're going to go with you. Go where? To Jerusalem. Read it there brethren. In verses 22 and 23. We're going to go with you. For we have heard that God is with you. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. And in the remnant. Whom the Lord shall call. My dearly beloved, I love you so much. May God bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. And as I said, brethren, there's only going to be a small portion that will be saved. Remember in the days of Gideon, Gideon started with 32,000. He finished the work with 300. Less than 1%. The 144,000 is that remnant, is that small portion. And that's why Ellen White says, let us strive with all the power that God has given us to be among the 144,000. How many made it, brethren, of those that left Egypt? Of men that left Egypt, how many made it into the promised land? Only two. Brethren, the way is so narrow. And that's why we need to make sure that we are following to the law and to the testimony. The truth is going to get deeper. And the time when the wicked shall lose out is when they met their idol and they refused to tear away from it. Brethren, cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 22. Jeremiah 17 and verse 5. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. And make a flesh his arm. You see brethren. In closing. The church 2000 years ago. They looked up to their leaders. And because Satan managed to blind the leadership. Naturally the blind leadership. Led the blind laity. Into the same pit. Let us not fall into that same deception, brethren. May God bless you and keep you. I love you so much, brethren. And may we be sanctified and purified and be prepared for the soon coming crisis is my prayer. In Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. And amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen.